Well, the, the Street Machine Nationals here definitely has a pro street slant to it because that was the predominant build style in the 80s when, when the Street Machine Nationals was in its heyday. Um, at, at that time in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, it was the only national scale car show that, that was, that existed. You didn't have good guys. You had NSRA, but that was all street rod stuff. This was it. This was it, period. Just, it was. And during that time, you didn't have pro touring cars. And the, the term street rod had not been expanded by anybody's definition to include anything newer than 1949. Pro street is, is probably the most narrowly focused build style. It, these cars are built like drag racing cars. They're meant to emulate cars that go fast in a straight line for a quarter mile. That's it. Like Pro Street has a definitive stance like a drag racer, Pro Touring has a definitive stance like a road racer. The street rod uh, cars, again in my opinion, are, are probably the most well-rounded. But you know, there's myself for instance, I've got I've got examples of all of those. Uh, I, I love them all. We build products for them all, and I personally love all of those styles. And um, I, I don't think one is any better than the other necessarily. You know, it, it's uh, I've often wondered where all the old, famous pro street cars went. Um, most of them, frankly, died from attrition. But there's a significant number of them like mine behind me here that I've hung on to. Why did I hang on to it? I don't know. It, to me, it, it's it's part of my history. And a lot of these cars, you know, Scott Sullivan still got his Cheese Whiz 55. He drove it to my shop the other day. Uh, Mark Grimes has still got his Chevelle. Uh, Doverton sold the Nova, but the new owner that lives in Oklahoma or Texas or somewhere, he brought it up here. It's still around. There's this old 56 Nomad over here that's covered with dust an inch deep with raccoon prints on the windshield. It's the coolest thing you ever saw. It was parked in 1996 and, and hasn't seen the light of day until a week ago. This, this is the breeding ground for great ideas. And you know, this is where ideas are shared. Somebody like Troy Trepanier over here, he, he is on a pedestal by himself, but there's an idea on every one of his cars, there's an idea that can be adopted for, for no money that you can gain from looking at one of his cars that can be very seamlessly integrated into anybody's car. I've done it several times, several times. This is where we come to share ideas. Not only do customers come here and ask questions of us about their projects, we learn from them. What do they think? What do they want? What are their concerns? Uh, we can tell by what questions they ask, uh, how we failed in our instructions or our design or our execution. So we learn as much from the customer at these shows as what the customer learns from us. The um, return of the Street Machine Nationals was actually instigated by, I'm assuming several people. The ones that I'm aware of uh, specifically is Toby Brooks. And Toby has written a new book uh, called Sensory Overload, and it's all about the Pro Street Movement and the DeCoin Street Machine Nationals in particular. He spent, a, he spent three years putting this book together. He worked very hard to make this happen. Uh, I know there were other people involved with it, I get that, but he was, he was the spark that lit the fire, in my mind. I mean, in my mind, I'm treating this like an annual reunion. You know, they have the, the Holly Hot Rod Reunion down in Bowling Green. They got the California Hot Rod Reunion in Bakersfield. Why not have the DeCoin Street Machine Nationals Reunion every year in DeCoin? Sounds good to me. I'll be here.